Terminal voltage is an important idea that uh, we need to know about. And terminal voltage has to do with, um, you know, what's going on within the cell itself. And we have a certain amount of EMF. You know, we have a certain amount of resistance inside intrinsic to, to the chemical process that has to take place. It's not instantaneous, right? You know, we, can't, we don't have an instantaneous chemical reaction. So we're going to have a little bit of resistance within the, the battery itself. And we've looked at the uh, components of this, you know, with a uh, sulfuric acid, you know, solution here, um, or whatever electrolyte that we have. We have the zinc electrode, right? Those, those atoms dissolve into the acid, leaves two electrons behind. The acid becomes positively charged, pulling electrons off the carbon electrode. And then the carbon electrode is positively charged, leaving the zinc electrode negatively charged. And then we have a potential difference set up, right? And it takes time. You know, it's not uh, automatic. As soon as, you know, let's say we, we set up our, our light bulb here. Um, and then, you know, we got our light bulb. Um, that current's going to go through. And then, you know, this is going to have to shoot off more atoms and leave more electrons behind. So the potential difference for an ideal battery is the same as the EMF, right? If For an ideal battery, if we had no internal resistance, the voltage would be the same as the EMF. However, for non-ideal battery, the potential difference is the EMF minus IR being the current times the resistance inside there. And so um, that's going to be a critical part as we look at that. Um, the potential difference in this picture we've got here, the potential difference across the terminals of battery is equal to the EMF when there is no internal resistance and it is less um, than the EMF when the internal there is internal resistance. So the top one we're looking at here, current passing through with no internal resistance in a real battery, we do actually have resistance in series and we have to consider that. So let's take a look at a situation here. Let's say we have a 12 volt car battery has an internal resistance uh, 0.5 ohms, 0 0.5 ohms. What is the actual voltage of the battery if uh, you know 0 0.5 amps is running through the wires? So um, the way we set this up is we have you know our EMF minus the the current through the circuit times the resistance, and we would get 11.975 volts as the effective voltage. Um, you know, the actual voltage that we would have. So we would subtract out from the EMF. All right, so uh, let's try this one here. Um, let's say we have a 12 volt battery internal resistance 0.4 ohms, and then we have a, a 4 ohm and a 7 ohm in series. Um, so let's draw that out here. So how much voltage is used up in the battery itself and uh, taken away from the overall amount? So when we do that, um, we have to add them up in series, so 0 0.12, 4, and 7. Um, we bring them all together. And, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and try to uh, finish the rest of this one. And uh, when you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. Okay, so um, our equivalent resistance is 11.12 ohms. And we can set up our ohms law. The current passing through the whole circuit is 1.079. And if we want to find out how much is used up within that one there, um, we know the current, we know how much internal resistance there is. It's going to be 0.129. So that's going to take away from the 12 volts. We would subtract the 12 volts um, minus 0.129, and that would actually be the real voltage. that. We so when we uh, discharge a cell, the capacity of the cell <clears throat> is the amount of charge uh, it can deliver to an external circuit in its lifetime. So that's the capacity. Uh, the bigger the current, the faster the cell discharges. And that should make sense, right? Because you know, you're only going to have a limited amount within a particular cell based on its construction. And so you know, as it erodes away, the metal erodes away and gets dissolved, yeah, it's going to um, affect it and um, make it discharge faster or make the battery um, life go go quicker. So what actually happens in a typical cell, let's say this is the terminal voltage, uh, and this let's say this is the discharge time, you know, in minutes over a full cell. Um, you know, if you have, let's say, you know, a, a, a battery that's um, being used initially, you know, the, the curve, you know, you can see there 
over the initial part, you know, has a higher terminal voltage, then it levels off pretty well. Um, and then there's a point at which it really drops off. And this is representing the discharge of a, you know, let's say you had, you know, 0.5 amps of current being used for this particular cell. Um, let's say, though, that you have a cell that's, you know, being used for something that's using twice as much current. You know, this could be a, uh, a higher wattage light bulb or something. And, you know, it's using more current in a particular amount of time. You can see how, you know, the, the terminal voltage drops off and then levels out. But then, you know, the, the voltage will, uh, will, you know, drop right off and not have as much time, right? You're using up the current. Um, it's not going to last as long. Um, likewise, if you have, let's say, a, a cell that, you know, is being used and you know it's being used up pretty rapidly right um you know 1.5 amps you know let's say it's a, even a, high, a higher wattage light bulb is using up more current it's going to drop off quickly so some of the trends that you can see here right um you know if you think about it the initial drop is due to the internal resistance of the battery uh you know the increased drop is is due to the increase in internal energy of the life of the cell right so you know over the life of the cell there's going to be more and more internal resistance which is going to affect the uh, current and 